Hey everyone, we are live for our Sunday weekly warm up, which is a Teach Better Team live stream we get to do every single week exclusive to our private Facebook group over at teachbettergroup.com. If you are live with us, we're so appreciative that you're in this private free Facebook group because we have over 7,000 educators that come here every single week to talk shop. We love being able to do a live stream where all of our comments are in one place so you can interact and connect with each other. And if you're catching this after the fact when it streams on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn, as a bonus episode also of Teach Better Talk podcast, then we appreciate you tuning in and we'd love to have you join our Facebook group so that you can be a part of the fun. We have a lot in store for you today, so get ready for your weekly warm up. <laughs> My name is Ray Hewart, and I have the one and only Brad Hughes with me. Hey, Brad. Hey, one and only Ray Hewart. Great to be with you tonight for another edition of the Sunday Weekly Warm-Up, exclusively in our Teach Better Facebook group at teachbetterfacebookgroup.com.net.org. Well, just add all of the suffixes you want. And Julianne is joining us. Hannah is joining us. And some mystery Facebook users are also joining us. So just a quick reminder, if you are joining us on Facebook, just above the panel where you see the stream, you're going to want to grant StreamYard permission to share your comments so we can know your secret identity. So whether you are an anonymous user or whether you are a named user, we're really excited to have you with us in the comments. And, and Ray, how was your weekend and, and what are you looking forward to for this coming week? Yeah, guys, my my weekend was good, Brad. I really love being able to like catch up and see how your weekend was on the show every single week. I spent a lot of my day hanging a fan, which uh, oh. was harder than it looked. <laughs> hanging a fan from a ceiling is not easy. It only took about two hours. So I feel like that's got to be a record somewhere. Have you ever hung a ceiling fan before? I have. And you're right. It's not easy. Uh, and uh, it requires three hands. And as I can tell, I've got two. Uh, and it's hard to get two people up on a ladder to get any kind of support. So I've ended up fashioning some wire and some coat hangers to hang the like it was it was not a small deal. So two hours, right? I think that's a I think that's a great achievement and I think it's got to be a world record. Have you ever hung a ceiling fan before? I I went into it feeling really confident. I was like this will be a no-brainer. I haven't hung a ceiling fan before, but I had done like a ceiling light. So I was like, yep. oh, this is like the same thing. Spoiler alert, it ain't. It was a really big project. <laughs> But it now is I not the say, same thing. But now I can say, Brad, I think I could do it again. Like, I feel like it was a, a learning curve. But now if anyone else needs something, a fan hung, you call me and I will be your third hand. I would love to help. I think for any home improvement project, Ray, you want to allow double the time that you think it's going to take. I mean, my family accuses me of having, well, not just accuses me, it's true. I have magical thinking. I think everything is going to go correctly the first time and so you know two or three trips to uh the home improvement store later i i probably got it done but you know after you know two hour project turns into a three four or five hour job and so you just have to have patience and belief in yourself and just you know faith that it will work out okay i just want everyone to know that if i can hang a ceiling fan so can you so <laughs> there is possibilities endless possibilities out there. But Brad, I can't say that was necessarily a highlight of my weekend, but it was definitely a major part of my weekend. What about you? Did you have any exciting wins from the weekend? Uh, yesterday, my brother Brian uh, celebrated his 50th birthday. So Woo! we went for some fun in games, uh, did some bowling, some snacking, some billiards, and a chance to catch up with family and some close friends to celebrate the birthday. Uh, and so that was an out of town trip for us yesterday. And and today has just been sort of dipping back into uh, getting ready for the week at school, but also dipping back into some crossword puzzles and some TV. And uh, we just had the Nintendo Switch going. We had some Mario Kart action going about uh, 45 minutes ago. So, you know, as Lindsay Titus reminds us, we can have a blended weekend. We can dip in here. We can dip in there. You know, just giving your full attention to whatever is on your mind and just trying to make the weekend the very best that you can. I love it. And I'm loving all the comments people sharing what they've been working on this weekend and also saying hello. This is the best part of streaming in our private group exclusive on Sundays is that you guys get to see each other's comments as well. Brad, I know it's silly because a lot of our network here knows so much about you, but 
in case they don't know much about your family, will you share a little bit? How many siblings do you have? Do you live close or close together? I mean, that's a big birthday, 50. I'd love to. Yeah. My brother, Brian, is my only sibling. Uh, I'm the older of the two siblings. Uh, my brother, uh, his wife and two kids live in the uh, town of Stratford, Ontario, uh, home of a huge uh, and world-renowned Shakespearean festival, as you might guess. Uh, the Stratford Festival takes place every summer here in southwestern Ontario, and it is magnificent. You know, both uh, Shakespearean plays and other dramas in, uh, I think, four, three or four stages around around the uh, around the town of Stratford. So um, it was a wonderful opportunity to get together both with Brian and his family, but also some childhood friends that uh, we grew up in a, a cul-de-sac, a circle uh, in a neighborhood in London, Ontario, and, and we stay in touch with those friends. We were a tight-knit group as kids, and uh, we had some of our friends, we called them the Circle Gang, the neighbors at the uh, at the get-together uh, this weekend, and we were reminiscing about uh, what life was like uh, in 1973 when Brian was born, and we did some 1970s trivia, and we uh, we discovered lots of fun things too. So it was an awesome, an awesome event. I love this. That's so fun. And I really love when birthday celebrations lead to those reminiscing, those memories, those holidays, those really good people that come together. Brad, do you and your and your brother look alike? Yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, Brian was gifted with uh, no need for glasses. Uh, and we do look alike. Yeah, we're about the same height. I think he's maybe got a half an inch on me. He's got much more hair than I do, though. I will say, I feel like siblings either look very, very similar, like you can tell in an instant that they're related, or they look nothing like each other. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that there's typically a medium. I'd love to hear in the comments how many siblings everybody has and if you guys look alike, because I, I feel like it's a very black and white decision. No, Ray, your, your sibling made, recently, if I remember it, made a, made a move back from Scotland to the U.S., and I haven't had a chance to catch up with you to find out how that move has been for her and how she's faring. If I remember right, is she in the San Diego area? She is in San Diego with their husband and their new puppy they just adopted. And things are going really well, but they've just been so busy. She's partaking in a residency program. So she's like okay. the busiest person on the planet. And uh, I will say this is a kind of a big celebration, Brad. I was excited to celebrate this next week, but um, she is coming in town with her husband. I have no idea for how long. I think it's a very quick trip. But it is going to be the first time and like the only time in the last year that we're going to be together with everybody in the family. So oh, it's kind wow. of exciting on Friday night. We're doing a family dinner. And typically my family's really close. Like we would typically find really frequent opportunities to do this. And since she's lived afar, we've had limited and limited opportunities. And now that she's been in San Diego so busy, it's been very limited. So this will be a big celebration to get all six of us together. It's really exciting. I need to brush up on my U.S. geography west of uh, Illinois, uh, and I, I'm wondering if there's a if there's a, a fun halfway point uh, between uh, Chicago area and San Diego that might be there's, worth a road trip or might be worth a meetup sometime. Yeah, I mean, there's hundreds of great places between <laughs> between Illinois <laughs> and San Diego because it's like the almost the entire country because we're Midwest and they're really really far south, but or west, but um. I think the struggle is just timing. So we need, we love when we all get together. So it'll be fun to do that on Friday, but I love sibling time. It's always a good celebration when everybody gets together. It's reassuring to get, I mean, your, your sibling is the, you know, the, the one, one person or the people in your life that will have known you uh, the longest. And uh, they are just, you know, just really reassuring touchstones uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of our lives. And I'm happy to hear that uh, your sister is well settled there and, Hopefully you have a chance to see each other in person soon. Do you, do you keep in, in touch by uh, by Zoom or other video chat? Lots of contacts, lots of texts back and forth. But, you know, typically families get together over the holidays. We have that tradition as well. But she actually didn't choose to come in for the holidays this year. She was very gracious. And, you know, because we're Jewish, there's so many people that hold Christmas to be such a important holiday that they make it home for. Yeah. We decided to take those shifts so that people that really wanted to go home could, which is fabulous but it let, meant that we didn't get together for the holiday so shout out to people out there that are working on those holidays that are very traditionally spent with family um so many people appreciate you taking that time but you know this will be kind of our our makeup time for that this friday ray dave is reminding us that pensacola is the same distance from both chicago and uh maybe even from southwestern ontario where i am so uh uh, Dave, we'll be booking those tickets pretty soon. And uh, you know what? We have a, a good news story to share uh, later on that just might uh, help Ray and me uh, visit Pensacola sooner than later. 
I love it. Dave is always pushing for people to come over to his neck of the woods. So Dave, I'm in. I'd love to see your family and your wife and everywhere that you live. It'll be fabulous. But when Dave was in Michigan, we weren't so excited to visit. <laughs> well, I remember my first in-person meet with Dr. Dave uh, at our Teach Better conference in Akron, Ray, back in October. And uh, I drove into the parking lot, the hotel parking lot, and Dave was uh, helping members of the Teach Better team uh, get things packed up to shift over to the venue. And and uh, once I parked the car, Dave and I did a slow motion run to each other and just, a, you know, a slow motion, and a slow motion, huge hug. And it was just uh, it was just amazing. The guy gives the best hugs and he is a gem of a human being. Yeah, that Dr. Dave Schmidt. Isn't it crazy that you have only met Dave in person that one time? It, it is. It is crazy because we've, we've met countless times online uh, sure. and uh, I feel just as close to him as if we you know, we're neighbors. Uh, but uh, what an awesome opportunity for me personally, but for our team to grow those relationships and connections, because many of us had never met each other in person at that time. So uh, looking forward to, you know, more opportunities in the future, right? Maybe not too distant future uh, to do just the same. Yeah, I will say, I feel like there's an element here when we have new people join the Teach Better family. There's this misconception that we actually all spend a lot of time together and we don't. We are very much virtual, just like our network. And <laughs> we work hard to keep our relationships really, really, you know, genuine because it's hard to have healthy virtual relationships. But that is truly at the core of what the Teach Better family is built on. So, you know, the few times we're able to see each other in person, we all rush to those opportunities. And Brad, I know we kind of released it last week. We could mention it again this week that if there was an opportunity where all of us could be together in person again, we would probably, most likely, almost definitely release it on the show first because this is, you know, our exclusive stream on our private group. Ray, if I remember correctly, uh, you were a former middle school math teacher. Yes. Uh, and so there's probably some probability connections there, you know, uh, uh, rarely, seldom, likely, definitely. And I think we're shifting from likely to definitely in terms of this Sunday weekly warm up being the venue where some kind of an announcement might be made to, you know, remind people about that opportunity. I am so excited for that. And speaking of things excited, can we totally go off track really quick? Because there was a major yeah. announcement, I think, today. I could be wrong, and I could be releasing this early, but I think it was today that something big was released. Uh, I think it was today. Uh, did it have something to do with a dozen hours of... Yeah. Is that public yet? Do you know, Brad? <laughs> I've seen, yeah, I've seen the postings on social media. And so I, I, I think it's official. I, I, I think we can, well, you know, Brittany, I think we can spill the beans about 12 hour live. What do you think, right? I totally think so. 12 hour live was released today and that's not what we were talking about, but that is a big deal. It's a huge deal. I mean, 12 hours of live professional learning with the teach better team. Uh, it, incredible, incredible guests, incredible structure too, from your, your welcomes and your coffee uh, to uh, celebrations, to you know, an entire half of a day of live professional learning focused on the grid method and mastery learning. Incredible. I'm so excited. You know, I have a little clip here that I might be able to play. Okay. So maybe we'll work on that in a little bit here. But I would love to just get people excited with that schedule coming out. We have our 12 hour schedule officially accessible and you guys can plan your entire experience for February 25th. It's not just, you know, rotating every hour. Some of them are half an hour segments and you can see the guests, you can see the themes. The themes are kind of the most important part right now. I'm so excited for that. So maybe here in a little bit, if I can do some magic behind the scenes, we could get a little clip going for that. You'll have maybe 12 or 13 seconds once we play one of the themes to transition from part to part, Ray. So we, no. I'm sure you can handle I mean, you put up a ceiling fan today in two hours, Ray. You can probably handle, you know, finding a screen to share of the 12-hour live agenda. The worst part is I really feel like I can, but I guess my struggle is the only way I can share this clip is if I out my other surprises, which I really can't oh, do. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we... I want to keep the lid on a few of those surprises. So, I mean, you want to be very, very delicate, very discreet about, you know. Here's my plan, Brad. Yeah. What if I have a little clip? We're just not going to be able to let it play all the way. Like, we're going to have to stop it. Is that is that something you're willing to risk? Absolutely. Yep. I'm here for the risk because the reward could be really big, too. 
All right. Well, it's uploading right now, so we will play that in a second. If you're just tuning in right now, I'd love to hear your excitement in the comments. 12 Hour Live was officially released. If you're brand new to the Teach Better family, 12 Hour Live literally means that the Teach Better team on February 25th is going live for 12 hours straight. There are no breaks. It is a full 12 hour free professional development streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. We have incredible guests incredible themes and incredible segments for you to learn about. And I think if this video finishes processing, I can show you the full details. Are you ready, Brad? Ready to go, Ray. Can't wait. Let's see if this works. <laughs> That's bonkers. Did did you see all that? It is so cool. That whole oh my gosh has so much content. Did you see how much content was in there? I, incredible. I mean, I mean, talk about well, I saw tangible takeaways. That that's what Teach Better is all about, is making sure that you know people joining us, whether it's for a live stream on Sunday or whether 12 hours, it's it's something that you can take away and you can put to use straight away and, and get conversation going with your students, with your colleagues and incredible guests and incredible contributions from our Teach Better team too, right? I'm really excited. And I know we haven't mentioned the giveaways and a lot of people lean to 12 hour because they love the giveaways. Don't worry. The giveaways are never ending, it seems like for this 12 hour. So yes, we will be giving away a ton of stuff. Like it is, we have probably too many giveaways. So I apologize for all the giveaways that we have for 12 hour. But I will say, I'm so excited, Brad, like you mentioned, for those themes. We are starting the morning with those tangible takeaways. Those are going to be like half an hour, an hour segments where people are just sharing stuff that you can literally implement as soon as tomorrow in your classroom, which is very Teach Better-esque. We love those real you know, opportunities to take an activity and bring it straight to our students. Yep. And what I really appreciate is then we're kind of switching it up to give you all different types of experiences. We're doing an administrator focused lunch. So for those of you who know administrators or are friends with leaders, uh, that could be a cool opportunity to share with them. I love our mastermind. It's going to be linked to that. And the other part, the second half of the day is going to be the work that people very rarely get access to. And Brad, that was kind of like intentional, but it's also a really big deal. Typically with school districts that bring us in to work with their teachers, it's it's really intense work. It's it's more of that work that takes some time. You have to chew on it. You need to maybe pull your resources. And it's not really something that's a, a quick fix. It's like a longer mindset shift and the work really goes into it. We don't really share that stuff on our live streams very often. And we have dedicated our entire second half to 12 hour to be those exclusive trainings that very few people in our network have gotten access to. It should be cool. Right. It's incredible because progressive mastery learning and the grid method uh, foundational to uh, the Teach Better team and the Teach Better group. Uh, and it's one of those things that, just like you said, it needs a place to start because the possibilities are limitless and the opportunities to collaborate are also so exciting. One of the things I've been so excited about recently, Ray, is seeing teachers and educators who are taking their first steps with the grid method, sharing their progress uh, with photos, with videos, with other uh, messages. Uh, and uh, Chad Ostrowski, you know, he also posted just a reminder that it's it's going to take guts, determination and support to see these things through. But, you know, it sounds like that afternoon of the uh, of the 12 hour live is going to be the spark. And it's is that place where we can just start just start with the grid method yeah i'm so excited for people to get these opportunities because i feel like this is the meat and potatoes of how you create change in education but it takes time it takes energy and that's why this family is so important that we can all support each other through this process and you know while i'm excited to get the the quick fixes in the beginning of the day and then the the good work the the hardy work that we don't always get access to because of these live streams and it'll, it'll be really fun. I'm excited for all the guests. I know we have a lot of people joining us and excited for February 25th to be an 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. experience Eastern time zone right there. Love it. 
I think uh, we might want to institute uh, the first annual uh, Teach Better Breakfast Buffet so that uh, sort of, you know, sort of uh, complementary or aligned with the, our Beige Day discussion last week, Ray, just just a, a, just a long line of constant breakfast foods. I'm thinking mini waffles, uh, tiny uh, sugary donuts, uh, maybe some bacon and other breakfast meats, if you wish, or some fruit set like just. You know, for every segment, we can, you know, make, you know, brought to you by Eggos or, you know, brought to you by, you know, cold cereal, wh whatever it is, you know, make it your own. But, uh, you know, a stack of pancakes with some delicious butter and maple syrup might go really well with that nine o'clock segment. So you want us to give away all the hundreds of giveaways that we're doing for everyone in our network and also provide it, also provide food. Is that what you're saying, Brad? Well, I know it's going to be a packed agenda, but, you know, maybe what we want to do is in between the segments, just sort of have maybe a little cooking segment, you know, a demonstration of, you know, a breakfast food or, you know, shifting over to lunch. We've got that in mid lunch. And let me tell you, as a school leader, it is it is tough to find time to get a, get a lunch on your own, let alone a lunch with uh, colleagues and other educators. So I love that idea of the uh, admin uh, of the leadership lunch. That's incredible. You know, Brad, something I always value about you is you are pushing us to be better. And while the entire 12 hour live is 12 hours of live professional free development for our crew, I appreciate you encouraging us to then deliver food to the world as well while it's happening. So we'll figure it out, buddy. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, our production assistant staff, I mean, the extensive production assistant staff that you and I each have in our respective studios here behind the scenes, they're always looking for ways to contribute, Ray. So we'll just make sure that they, you know, they, they can contribute to the food. You know, what I'm thinking is we do 12 hour. We really love traditionally do 12 hour once a year. And again, 12 hours of free professional development streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn for our community giveaways, trainings, engagement in the comments. It's going to be great. What we need, Brad, is you have a full year. I'm giving you this task. You're going to be okay. great. A year from now, you need to have the technology where we can reach through the screen and like deliver food oh. to anyone watching. It would be like 6K, right? Like, like yep. you could go like this and then you could just like grab the, then we would put a food for every segment. It'd be like a tasting experience, like a wine tasting, but maybe pancake tasting, you know? I think that would be ideal. I mean, I think one of the real opportunities there too, Ray, is to uh, bring, you know, teach better smell -o vision to the world. So, I mean, the, you know, the aroma of delicious, uh, fresh off the griddle uh, pancakes or, uh, you know, the, the, the lovely, you know, sharp and, and sweet aroma of, you know, freshly squeezed orange juice. It's just bringing that out to uh, each of our viewers. I, I'm not sure if we can offer a taste yet, but uh, maybe, you know, maybe the Teach Better smell -o vision camera will be uh, in development in, in Teach Better Labs. I, I, I love this plan. 2023 12-hour live is February 25th. It is just a, a little over a month away. And next year, we'll have Smell-O-Vision. So get excited. I will, also, I will also mention, Brad, because I'm not allowed to talk a lot about this because I'll get in trouble. So I'm going to yep. click the button right after I say this. But there is an exclusive mystery bonus only available to those who attend a part or all of 12 Hour Live that every single person will get. All right, I'm clicking the button. All right, friends, we are diving into discussion for our Sunday weekly warm up. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly Sunday show. We love being able to share excitement and celebrations here. And while we have a big announcement coming in a few weeks, we were glad to at least preview some 12 hour live news because that was such a fun little bonus. For those of you that are sharing, you're so excited and you've already added February 25th to your calendar. We appreciate you. and We can't wait to have you there. We will be streaming that on all streams, including the one you're watching this show on. So don't worry, you will have access to it. For our deep dive discussion, I'm so excited to interview the one and only Brad Hughes, who is obviously a main host on this show. Brad, are you ready for the hard hitting questions that are going to be presented to you today? Ray, I spent a good deal of the afternoon uh, prepping for this interview. Um, I, uh, I read lots of comic books. Uh, I watched reruns of Jeopardy. Uh, and I may have had a few snacks as well. So I, if it has to do with pop culture or superheroes or any trivia, I'm ready. Otherwise, I, you know, t just take what you get. 
Brad, I know you know this, and I know our listeners know this, our viewers know this. You are, in my opinion, the funniest and coolest person on the planet. So when we were trying to identify what to do on the show, I was so excited to kind of flip the script on you. I think you are an incredible person as just a human being, but also an educator. And we very rarely get to talk about you as the educator you are. So I want to start with some basics in case people don't know everything about you. But tell us a little bit, how did you get into education? Why did you why did you enter this crazy field? I think one of the things that really drove me to education, Ray, was just a love of connecting with kids. Uh, I was very fortunate as well to have had have experienced experienced a lot of school success. Um, this is my uh, 30th year as an educator. So uh, 20 28 uh, years uh, as a teacher and school leader. Prior to that, I was actually a youth instructor inst instructor for the visual arts. So it's my 30th year as an educator and uh, every year provides new opportunities to improve kids' lives. And as a school leader, I've shifted more and more, more, more intentionally to really hopefully improving the lives and the working lives and the personal lives of the educators that serve our kids. And that's my philosophy is, you know, love the adults that serve the kids uh, and uh, just grow the love from the inside out. See, I have always loved your background in education and something that I feel like should be celebrated more is I know you're in a leadership role now, but you were an educator in a very interesting position for a number of years prior to becoming obviously the principal in your placement where you currently are. Can you tell us a little bit about what you taught and, and why you enjoyed it so much? I'm happy to. I, I spent nearly 16 years as a French teacher. Uh, for first to eighth grades. Um, and before I was uh, in education, uh, I earned a degree in visual arts and English literature with, uh, with a goal to become a visual arts teacher. Uh, I dabbled a little bit. A crossroads moment for me, Ray, was whether I would become a film animator or, uh, or become an educator. And so I did, uh, I did take some courses to uh, begin some foundational work in film animation, decided that although that was an interest it wasn't yet a passion. And so I, I shifted my focus back to education. And actually in the last three and a half years of my teaching career, that was when I finally got the opportunity to teach visual arts in a studio classroom to seventh and eighth grades, uh, as well as uh, vocal music, French, and some special education. So a little bit of a Swiss army knife uh, finish to my teaching career, Ray, and uh, grateful that I can provide that service. And, you know, visual arts continues to be my passion as well as uh, language learning and you know, I, I'm happy to have had those opportunities to connect with kids with so much fun and, and so much opportunity for, you know, both verbal, oral, written and artistic expression along the way. And it's so cool. And it's, it's skills that I don't have. I'm terrible with languages. Um, obviously, I speak English as my primary language growing up. And then I dabble with Hebrew. Uh, we actually were practicing Hebrew in my home earlier today. But tell yeah. me a little bit, how do you keep up the French, do you feel like you've lost it now that you're not teaching it? Or do you still find opportunities to, to practice the language? Because language is very much, if you don't use it, it, it does kind of get in the back of your brain. You, you forget some of the details. I do take opportunities to use it every day as I visit French classrooms uh, in my school uh, and had been doing that as a school leader, uh, well, you know, daily, uh, sharing my interest in and love of the French language with the students, but also hopefully bolstering the confidence and enthusiasm of the French educators, knowing that they had at least one other staff member uh, that was an ally, a cheerleader for French language. And uh, I, I, I loved teaching French. I was able to, uh, to, to really uh, structure my classes in a way where there was a lot of uh, music, uh, drama, even visual arts, and uh, no class was complete, Ray, without some kind of a game show. So as I, I love broadcasting and I love announcing and, it's always been my dream to appear on a game show, but uh, because I haven't yet appeared on a game show, uh, then I, I fancied myself as a game show host. So each of my French classes would have a game with a spinner wheel on the whiteboard and some trivia or some interactive slides. And so I continue to uh, advocate for and, and visit uh, French classes and speak French when I have the opportunity. And of course, Duolingo is, uh, is, a, big, is, a, is a big friend of mine too. I love that. It's so cool. You know, it's interesting. I know so many educators that get into the field have a passion for the content and then develop or really foster their passion for the craft of, of educating others, right? The teaching component that comes with it. And you don't also want to lose the love for the content. 
for for you, especially whether it be art or language, I, I guess finding outlets to use the language is is important since you enjoy it so much. Do you find outlets for the art component as well? I do. Um, at school, I continue to enjoy uh, creating and decorating murals. Uh, I work with our school happiness team to uh, really enhance just sort of the visual aspects of of the school. Uh, we're moving forward this year with uh, a project to enhance our, for, our, our foyer and our hallways uh, with graphics and, and just to make it as welcoming and as vibrant as possible. So I'm able to apply my, my visual arts uh, knowledge in that way. But uh, it, it really is wonderful to be able to come alongside a group of kids who are uh, working on an art project or maybe just spend a few quiet moments with a kid who would benefit from some personal contact and some co-regulation, you know, do, to do some coloring or some drawing. And uh, and it's all about those connections, isn't it, Ray? Just to, to talking about the, you know, the impact that these special aspects of your educational life have meant to you personally and professionally. So whenever I can make a connection with a kid because they're passionate about uh, cartooning or about anime or they're passionate about uh, the visual arts, um, I love being a guest instructor for some of our uh, classrooms. And so I've had the opportunity to do some some guest art lessons as well. And uh, I was just reflecting too about French language. I had a wonderful opportunity very recently uh, mm -hmm. when two students joined our school and they had actually uh, recently arrived from France and spoke uh, only a little bit of English, uh, but they also spoke German and Italian, which was fascinating. But what was wonderful and connected was for at least one of the students, I was able to help to uh, reassure and to support and to just keep the personal connections going uh, by speaking French with this little guy. So it was a wonderful opportunity. Oh, so fun. And I, I love, Brian, you'll have to share pictures of the work that you guys are doing in your school. Cause I just feel, and I know teachers do this all the time, but I love that environments have such a big influence on our success. So, you know, making your school environment a warm and welcoming place is so important. I love that you're working on that wall. We'll want to see photos, but Okay, so you did all this incredible work. Obviously, now you've moved into a leadership role where you get to dabble. As you've gone through education now 30 years, have you found that over the last year or so, you've developed a passion for a specific area that you feel like just is that that soapbox topic, something that you're a real advocate for? What is that for you? A few things come to mind, Ray. Well, one is that uh, my work as a school leader and educator, but also as a person has been significantly transformed and enhanced by my involvement with Teach Better. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the Teach Better mindset, you know, better today, better tomorrow, that that really is restorative in my personal practice and personal life. And it really is something that we work to adopt in our school setting, it, you know, focusing on a little bit better each day. You know, it's, <laughs> I think we recently joke, it's called Teach Better, not Teach Perfect. And let's face it, you know, the stakes are high in our line of work, Ray. Right? We want the very, very best for the kids and the adults we serve. We also have to recommend re re remember that we we're human beings, and 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 education is uh, it's it's a human craft of, of of interacting with and orchestrating success for people who are ever changing and their needs are ever changing, and that also uh, goes back to us. Uh, a second passion of mine, Ray, is is recognizing the role of uh, of energy, uh, mm -hmm. stress, and restoration uh, in the work that we do, um, called a self reg approach. So I've uh, uh, I've achieved a certification uh, in self-reg school leadership, and that comes from the Merit Center uh, here in uh, Canada. Uh, Dr. Stuart Schenker is the author of the book Self-Reg and a number of uh, offshoots of that, including professional learning, where we learn to be, I guess, healthily skeptical about whether what we see in a child might be misbehavior in case, it, it, on the other hand, right, it, it may actually be evidence of overwhelming stress. And so when a child is misbehaving or when a child is not regulated, it could be evidence that they're doing all that they can, even though it's maladaptive or, or interrupting to, to, to just to keep things in check. We're always searching, always searching to find out the reasons why the behavior that we're seeing in our classrooms, in our hallways is occurring. And then taking steps ourselves to soothe and reassure ourselves that we can come alongside young people and, and co-regulate with them, help to meet their needs so that they can be at their best. You know, children do well when they can, says Dr. Ross Green. And so I've had the opportunity at the Teach Better Conference in October to um, to work with a workshop group on that topic. And it, it, was a, it was a tweet from the Merit Center that changed my perspective completely on student misbehavior. And it's something that I continue to advocate for and continue to be reflective on in my own practice, Ray, as, as well as trying to move practice forward in uh, our classrooms and hallways too. 
You know, Brad, I know we could dive into so many different things. And I know we have a weekly giggles planned for this week and everything else. But if you could challenge our community to do one thing this week to be better in this self-reg um, mindset, this approach, what could you challenge them to do? Because I've heard you speak on this numerous times. And I also, to be honest, I see you implement it frequently, even just with adults that we work with. I, I even, I, I find you to be somebody I lean on when I need some of that support and you help me through that work. So there's so many different components of being an educator, so many things that we can learn about. And I think this would be such an important one for our, our community to find a few minutes this week to find a way to be better in. So what can you challenge us to do this week? Ray, I really believe, and I've had to continue to come back to this again and again for myself so that I can continue to be better for others, is that compassion for others has to be founded on compassion for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as educators, when you reflect on the week that you had or the week ahead, uh, I, I want you to remind yourself to take moments every day to speak to yourself lovingly and soothingly, just like you would a good friend. Speak to yourself, let your inner voice or let your inner, you know, your, your inner work, your inner dialogue about what's happening to you be soothing and reassuring to you. Uh, we have to extend compassion to ourselves. Uh, Lisa Bayless is a wonderful educator in, uh, in uh, British Columbia, Canada, and had the opportunity to speak with and work with Lisa on self-compassion for educators. I also happen to use the Calm app really frequently. And if any are, any folks are using the Calm app, there was a really great segment on uh, the daily trip uh, called Circuit Breaker. Uh, and I'd encourage folks, if you have the Calm app, to check out that daily trip segment called Circuit Breaker. Uh, it's a way of literally breaking the circuit of intrusive and negative thoughts by taking an intentional moment of self-compassion. Uh, and it's 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 those moments, Ray, that I continue to need as a school leader and as a family member and as a community member. And heck, as a member of the Teach Better team, we we strive for awesomeness. And when we have setbacks, we want to make sure that we are able to soothe and reassure ourselves so that we have the capacity to soothe and to reassure others. Uh, such a wonderful challenge and bread. Totally something that's obtainable for this week. That's something that we can all do, even though everybody has a to-do list that's overflowing with responsibilities. This is an important one to put up at the top. We'll be right back for some weekly giggles. Brad, I hear there's a good one this week. I think Dave will like it. We'll see. <music> Brad, I can already see the comments that people are loving your insight. If you are just tuning in right now, make sure to head back in the show because we've been able to share so many great, great takeaways as you head into your week. That's why this is the Sunday Weekly Warm Up. We want to get you ready for a successful week ahead. I love the weekly giggles. And Brad, you prepare for hours, I know, for this segment. It's my favorite. So tell us <laughs> something. I love it too, Ray. And this segment, well, it's just a happy accident. We were, we were, uh, talking uh, or with Dave, uh, Dr. Dave Schmidow in our comments about, you know, maybe arranging a trip to Pensacola or for you to visit Ray, your sister in San Diego. And, and there is actually an opportunity for free airfare that caught my eye uh, coming from the good news network. Oh, I'm so excited. I've shared my screen and you can see that frontier is offering free airfare to anyone looking to adopt one of these three adorable kittens, Ray. Oh. That's a cool concept. So the story goes that Las Vegas Animal Foundation was delighted to learn that Frontier Airlines is offering free travel vouchers to anyone who adopts one of their three newborn kittens. So shortly after they were born, the kittens were named Spirit, Delta, and Frontier for unknown reasons. And so once Frontier got wind of these kittens with the airline names, they decided to step up and said that anyone that adopts a kitten could earn a $250 travel voucher and anyone that adopts frontier, they will double that up to $500 in vouchers. And so if you are looking to adopt a little one into your home and to, uh, to get some free travel, then, uh, this, this airfare adoption, uh, from Las Vegas may be the ticket for you. 
That's so funny. Like what a simple little way to get people happy and excited. And you get a kitten out of it. That's a cute concept. I wonder if there's an opportunity here that we're missing that, that we could be kind of like cross promoting, celebrating other people. I don't know. I, I love that one thing had nothing to do with the other. And yet two people came to two groups of people came together and said, Hey, let's do something fun just because I think that's so cute. Well, animal welfare is is just so important to our communities. And it's often said that how we treat animals is a reflection of how we are as a society. Uh, anytime we can draw to people's attention an opportunity to make the world a little bit better by taking care of other, other living things. And it might be a cool story to bring forward to our kids who might naturally be attracted to, you know, three newborn kittens. But also, I love your question, Ray, how it doesn't seem to be related, but looking for opportunities to spread kindness and to promote service in unexpected ways might be something that you can bring up to your students at school using that story. Oh, I love that. That would be a great discussion. And who doesn't love to talk about kitties? That's so cute. <laughs> Brad, it's been so fun to be able to talk shop today. And I know we've been able to talk about a lot of different things. I wonder, can we play our 12 hour commercial one more time so people can take either a screenshot of their screen when the full schedule is up or they can go hunting for it by following at Teach Better Team on any social media platform. And they can start planning their kind of their experience as they look at that 12 hour live schedule on February 25th. It's like a trip planner, but for educators, it's incredible. So, I, I can't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about it. It's going to be an awesome event. And absolutely, I think we should close off with a video. I love it. We're going to play this quick video. And then when we come back. I would love for Brad to share his contact information so all of you can connect with Brad, not only as a member of the Teach Better team, but as the incredible educator and leader he is. I know you guys are going to have a lot of follow-up questions based on the comments. So we'll be right back. today and interview you, get to know you a little bit more as not only a person, but as the educator that you are, would you mind sharing your contact information so that our community can reach out? I'd be like, I'd be delighted. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to uh, have the tables turn on me. It was a lot of fun. You're an outstanding interviewer and uh, what an awesome opportunity for me to share my passions and experience and, and hopefully draw others in. So you can reach me on uh, Twitter at Brad underscore Hughes. H-U-G-H-E-S, and you can see uh, my Twitter handle there on the screen. Uh, you can also reach me by email, brad at teachbetter.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well, and Instagram and LinkedIn. So you can reach me on any of those channels, and I'd be delighted to uh, support you and continue the conversation in any way that uh, serves you and the kids that you serve too. So fun. Friends, we are excited to see you next week with an incredible guest that is a new recent add-on to our Teach Better Speakers Network for the Sunday weekly warm-up. And don't forget, the week after, we are coming back with a really phenomenal panel. And we really, really love being able to feature different educators to talk shop about a very important data-driven topic. So we will see you next Sunday for the Sunday weekly warm-up. See you guys later. Bye, friends. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.